Welcome to Global Altar Platform, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. You can watch our previous and current episodes on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. The channels are YouTube and Facebook, The Word with Levin. Instagram is Global Altar Platform. Please turn on notifications to join us live every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The Word with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903-470-0607. Send an email to info at globalautoplatform.com or visit our website on www.globalautoplatform.com. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Praise God. Welcome to tonight's episode, the 19th day of February. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, tonight. We give honor and praise to you. We thank you, Lord, because you will teach us your word. You empower us and bring us the breakthrough we desire to your glory, conforming to the image of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome our viewers and listeners all over the world to the Global Altar platform. We are trusting God. Uh, it's been a wonderful time in God's presence in this month of February. And uh, I'm sure you can see that the month is already running. The year is running. The year is running. But we are trusting God that God will shall run and finish strong, successfully in the name of Jesus. We are still continuing with our book of Ephesians, uh, 3,039 words in 155 verses. We are in chapter 4, and uh, we are believing God as we go deeper. I'm sure that you are getting blessed and be empowered, be enlightened, because God is in this business. Now, we are still continuing on the reclaiming the believer's identity. And uh, as we remarked, the first three chapters dwell so much on the mystery of Christ, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus. Uh, the last three chapters deal with the believer's work the family's life, the gifting life, the service life, the welfare of the believer. And so tonight we are continuing with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 down to 32. We are looking at the working of the believer. The working is, is on purpose. We didn't say the work of the believer. We said the working of the believer because it's something that we must do every day of our life. Jesus says, if you must follow me, you must take up your cross and follow me daily. Praise the Lord. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, it said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to walk all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. We are looking at the believer, the maturity of the believer. The, when you are born again, Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus. There's something he said remarkably, and we see that in verse, uh, in verse 17. He said, this I said, therefore, and now, therefore, you need to go back to the, to, the, to, to the preceding scriptures, to the preceding verses, where he was dwelling so much on the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Ghost, apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. And he says they are given, those gifts are given for the equipping of the believer, 
for perfecting the saint to endify, to exhort, and to call, and to and to and to endify, to admonish. And we did mention that the spiritual gifts are given to empower the believer. And so we need to understand that these giftings are gifts from God, and they are the Christ gave it to us as trophies of victory. The Bible says, He led captivity captive and He gave gift unto men. So anytime you are manifesting the gift of the Spirit, anytime you desire the gift of the Spirit, you are actually demonstrating the trophy of Jesus' Lordship over death, over sin, over sickness. Each time the gift of God is manifest in the life of the believer, you are just singing a triumphant song of Christ over the power of death, over the power of Satan, over the power of darkness. And it's on this revelation that Apostle Paul now wrote to the church of Ephesus and said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Now, there's something about that. Why was Apostle Paul emphasizing now he was trying to get the church of Ephesus to know their true identity, a call again, to know who they were and which extent to us. Now, in the scriptures, or from the scripture, there are three rays. We have the Jews, the Gentiles, and the church. The Jews, that is the, the Israelites, the Gentiles, the non-Israelite nations all lumped together. And then there's a third race that God has chosen for himself. There's a third race that God has carved out for himself. And that is the church. Now, which is a combination of the saved from the Jewish and the Gentile nation. And so Apostle Paul began to tell them that he, they should understand that they are no longer like other Gentiles. That is the call of self-awareness. A look into understanding what Christ has done on the cross. He said they should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles. Meaning that you don't look at do the things that others are doing because the spirit of adoption in the life of the believer set you apart for a greater purpose, for a greater call. Someone said, that the call of God upon the life of the believer is greater than the fall. The call of God upon your life is greater than the fall. And so Apostle Paul needed to remind them that their own pattern of life should be different. Their thinking should be different. He began to list about five to about seven things that they should no longer do as Gentiles who are now redeemed of the Lord. One, he said they should no longer walk in the futility of their mind. By futility of mind, we are looking at the emptiness, the void, the aimlessness, and the worthless thinking of man, of the unredeemed, of the unsaved. The Bible made it clear to us that when you are not saved, your thinking is considered futile. That is the verdict of God's word. No matter how incredible things may be, no matter how high achieving you may appear to be, the scripture says the thinking of the unsaved is futility, is emptiness. It leads to empty life. It leads to fruitlessness. Why? Because their words, everything about them is empty, is void. When we say something is void, no shape, in fact, we can say it's amoeboid. void, you know, no shape, no fin, nothing, there's no substance in their thinking. And now, he also mentioned that when you are not saved, you, your thinking is, your understanding is darkened. There's no light. The Bible said Christ is like John chapter 1 verse 1. Say in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so the Bible said Christ is the light of the world. He said I have come that they may have life. He said in him, in his life, in his light, we see life. So everything about life, everything about light is connected to Jesus Christ. And so Apostle Paul began to tell the children of, Israel, of, of Ephesus that when you are not saved, your understanding is darkened. That means it's blinded. You cannot grasp the things of God. 
That is why men that are celebrated in the world who have not the light of God, they, they, when they say something, they start asking, what kind of mind, what kind of a heart is altering this? It's because their understanding is darkened. Their mindset is dwarfed. Their mindset, their mindset is different. They cannot comprehend the things of God. And that is why they question everything that is ascribed to God. They question everything that God does in the life of his children. They question everything. Why? Because they cannot understand. And rightly so, for the Bible says that the carnal man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. So Apostle Paul said, for you, Ephesus, for you believers in Ephesus, for you a Christian hearing me tonight, seeing me tonight, that will listen wherever this message gets to, it says your understanding is now enlightened. So you no longer walk as somebody whose mindset is dark. And then on that picture, the Apostle Paul wanted them to see is that the life of the rest Gentiles who are not saved is that which is separated from the life of God. The life of God. Today, all over the world, we see a lot of global conflict because of climate change. The rivers are drying. The, the, the water level is getting shallower because of a lot of things. Now, you will see that a river that used to flow downhill before is reducing. So the life of the life, the life, the, the livelihood of people down the stream is shrinking because the water no longer flows. And so it is in spiritual matters when you are cut off from the source of the living water, when you are cut off from the source of life, death prevail. Death is what you have. And so Apostle Paul said that those who are not saved their life is those are is considered as being alienated from the life of God. By alienation, we are looking at hostility towards God, frustrated towards God, and a lot of emptiness, hopelessness. And then, another thing again is that there's ignorance, a lot of ignorance in the life of those that you may want to envy. Hardness and loss of all sensitivity. They, have, they don't have feelings for God, no feelings for morality. They are so callous. When you look at man in humanity to man, you begin to wonder from which heart is this proceeding from. And the other thing about the life or that, or that the believer is no longer supposed, uh, the life that a believer should no longer live is that he, a life that is taken over by sensuality, by impurity, by lust, or by greed. And that is because Many people's life is fueled by the quest for, to be on the first lane. And because of that, they are given to covetousness, they are given to anger, and they are given to endless craving. Apostle Paul now said, when you live in such a life, you cannot say you are part of this light. So he needed to remind the, the efficient church that they should no longer walk in this manner. What does that tell you? What that tells us is that there are some Christians, you are saved quite all right, but you, your, your, your light has not grown. You've not grown spiritually. Apostle Paul is telling us today by the Holy Spirit that we need to put some things in place. Apostle Paul is reminding us by the Holy Ghost that we need to do what we need to do as people who have seen the light. Your speech should be different. Your ambition should be different. Your value system should be different. Why? Because the light has come. Now, in verse 22, he now says something. He said, put off concerning your former conduct, the old man with grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss. Put off is a noun verb. He said, put it off. And there's something about putting off. It's, not some, it's something that you must do voluntarily. You must use your willpower to put it off. It's like a garment. And there are three layers that we are to put off. One, you say, we say there are three layers of putting off and putting on. The first thing is say we should put off the former man, the old man, the Adamic now. That man, that Mr. Flesh. The one that said, do you know who I am? The one that says, you match my leg, do you know who I am? How dare you talk to me like that? That is the old man speaking. We are to put off that old man as a believer. 
You know, when you hear some believers say, if you know who I am, if, I, if, you, if you try me now, I will tell you who I used to be. That person simply has not seen the light of God. That person simply has not embraced the light as a new race, as a new member of the church of Jesus that Christ has redeemed to himself. Then there's also what you call renewer of mind. He said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. When you are born again, your body does not get born again. It is your spirit that gets born again. And that is why your mind is renewed to align with the spirit of God. You are, your mind is to be renewed by the word of God so that you can bring your mind subject to the word of God. And so in putting off, one, you put off the old man. Two, your mind is renewed. And then the third one, he said, put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. When you put off a dirty garment, you can't stay naked. You can't stay naked. That's why Jesus says, when a demon is cast out, he goes in the desert looking. And then when he comes back and sees the place clearly swept, he goes back and brings seven wicked demons. When you put off the old man, you have to put on the new man. You have to put on the righteousness of God. You have to put on the newness of life. You have to put on the holiness and the righteousness of God, which was purchased on the cross. Now, why must our mind be renewed? Romans chapter 1. Why should our mind be renewed? In Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Romans 1, 21. It says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thought, and their foolish heart were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. You can see again that when a mind is not enlightened by God, the Bible considers it futile. Your thought life is futile. Your heart is considered foolish because it is darkened, because the light of God has not been allowed to shine into your heart. And so that is the reason why our mind has to be renewed. Now, why is it so? Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 says something similar. It says, and do not be conformed. Say, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is good can be proven. What is acceptable can be proven. What is perfect can be proven. But it cannot be proven by an unregenerated mind. That is why many a time, some people want to understand God. Well, you cannot understand God because your mind is not attuned to understand God. God said, prove you me. It takes, it, it's, it's, a self, it's, it's a self experience. It's a personal experience for you to understand the workings of God. Why would, must your mind be renewed? Again, because the mind is selfish. The mind is self-centered. The mind is self-seeking. And is centered on the world, the flesh, and this life. That is all that the mind of a man is designed to be vain and depraved and because of that apostle paul said come on as believers your life must no longer be in this manner rather your mind is to be transformed hallelujah and so in verse 22 he says what he said you should put off the old man now now we move further that when you have to put off the old garment it's very important we stress more on this old garment that need to be put off because many of us we are believers we are Christian, but we still see the old garment still manifesting. That's why it says we must hold on closely to the cross of Jesus. Why it says putting away lying, that's the first garment, the garment of lies. Saying things that are not true. The garment of lies. The garment, it says let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. We are members one of another. Then it says be angry but do not sin. And that garment to be put off is the garment of anger. Anger is not a sin, but anger can become sin. Why? Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Many believers, are, when you see the anger of some Christians, you marvel if they have had an encounter with the man of Calvary. 
If you are still putting on the garment of anger, this is calling you to put off that garment. Anger has led many people into prison. Anger has caused many people to commit manslaughter, unintended murder, and they are suffering the consequences. Anger has made some people to end their marriages. Because of anger, they've destroyed, they've said things that ought not to be said. For us, he said, put off that garment. The garment of stealing, taking what does not belong to you, legally or illegally. The garment of worthless talk, talk that does not end the fire. Talks that defy. The Bible says profane words and babbling words should not proceed from the mouth of the believer. Then under garment is the garment of being contrary. And then there's something about stealing here. He said, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor. What does that tell you? Is that some people in the church of Ephesus, they are Christian, but they say stealing. Apostle Paul did not condemn them. Rather, he admonished them to stop stealing, but to apply themselves to labor. There's dignity in labor. So he, he, he didn't condemn them, but rather, he said they should steal no longer. That means it's not for you to, you may say, well, I'm not perfect. Yes, it's accepted. But God is not, is not calling us to do what? To take this further by stop stealing and to apply ourselves to labor so that our profiting may be, up, uh, may, be, may, be, may be seen by all. So that we can support other people who need help. Now, again, he said we should stop being contrary. You know, some people are very divisive. Some people are very divisive. In any way you find them, there must be confusion. In the church, in the office, in the market, in the business, anywhere you see them, they have the spirit of dissension follow them. They never agree with anything you say, no matter how good it is. Apostle Paul says, you must put off that garment. The Bible says, you must put off that garment. Why? Because you are now a new person. He said, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, put them away. Evil speaking. Some of us are still cursing people. As believers, God is not condemning you, but he's saying we should stop, we should move further. Because there are many things ahead of us this year. There are things that God wants to do in your life, in your business. He says, evil speaking be put away from you. Some believers backbite. Some believers, you are slanderer, you are a slander. Whatever, whatever will be said, them say, them say as they say, is being traceable to you. The Bible says, no, as a believer, that is not the life you are called to live. Amen. Rather, you are to put on a new garment. A new garment that is what? A new garment that will show who you are. The garment of a new person. And that garment says, he said, he said let all bitterness, all wrath, all anger. Many of us are suffering from insomnia, sleeplessness, because of anger, unforgiveness. I remember those days we were praying, having prayer band meeting in Asaba, Delta State, Nigeria. I remember very well we were praying and the power of God came so heavily. We could feel the power of God, we could see the presence of God. And we saw a sister screaming and saying, well, eventually, we, of course, a member, we all shocked. We were taking her back and we have to minister to her. And what was the problem? Unforgiveness. When we minister that spirit out of her, I tell you, the life never remains the same again. Many of us are having ulcer, hypertension, BP going up because of anger, bitterness. The Bible says, don't let bitterness trouble you. Say, don't give roots to bitterness to spring up. Many of us, what happened 10 years ago is still holding us. We've not forgiven our mothers our fathers, our uncles, no matter what it is, the Bible says you must put on the garment of forgiveness, the garment of kindness. When we say kindness, we are saying be gentle, be caring, be helpful, be cautious, be good, be useful, giving, showering favors upon people, treating other believers as of the same kin, as your kids and kin, non neglectful, nor harsh, not sharp, not bitter, not resentful. It's very important. And on that thing we are to put on is to be tender-hearted, be compassionate. That means showing mercy, showing understanding. Some of us are very impatient with other people's weaknesses. As a believer, you are known to be impatient. 
is a garment that must be put off in the life of the believer. Some of us, you say, you, you are aware of people suffering, but you cannot do anything. But as a believer, the garment you are called to put on is the garment of tender heartness that you, 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 have, you have feelings and you help where you can help to alleviate people's suffering. And then the Bible says we are to be forgiven. The garment of forgiveness, gracious to people to pardon them for the wrong done to us. And one thing about forgiveness is that whether the person who offends you know it or not, it is your own advantage to forgive the person. Why? Because you don't want your prayers to be hindered. You don't want your prayers to be hindered. You want God to answer your prayers. That is why it's very important for us to know that God has called us into a life of forgiveness as believers. Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians 3, 13. It says, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. He didn't say you ought. He said you must do. So forgiveness is a garment to put on. Compassion is a garment to put on. Kindness is a garment to put on. Why you have to put off the garment of lying, of anger, of bitterness, of, 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 of harsh words, of being unkind, of being brash and being rash to people. When you do that, you are on to walking as a believer in victory. God bless you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We bless your name. Let your word reflect in our heart and our conduct. Help us to put away the old garment and to put on the new garment to your glory. Thank you, Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. By the grace of God, our next episode, we're still looking at Ephesians. We shall be moving into Ephesians chapter 5. One of the greatest challenges in the life of the believer, calling to be imitators of God. See you and God bless you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin, presented by Global Altar Platform. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of The Word. Our social media channels are being displayed on the screen. God bless you. See you next week.